So in our previous videos, we built these registers uh, that are able to store a value. So for example, this register currently has the value six in it, one, one, zero in binary is six. This register currently has a value of two, so one, zero in binary is, is a two. And these registers are connected to a shared bus so that they can output their contents to the bus. You know, if we set this signal here, you can see the six gets output to the bus. Um, and they can also input data from the bus. And so you can move uh, data from one register to another and so forth. This register down here is our instruction register. We're gonna kind of ignore that for the next few videos and, and focus on right now, just the A register and the B register. Because we are able to store two values in these registers, uh, in the A register and B register. So what I wanna think about next is how we can perform mathematical operations on the contents of these two registers. Because if we have you know, a six here and a two here, you know, perhaps we want to add six plus two, or maybe we want to subtract six minus two. So to do that, we need to build uh, some kind of circuit that is able to do math. And a typical circuit for that is called a, an arithmetic logic unit uh, because it does arithmetic. Um, and it may also do logical operations. We can talk a little bit about, the, about that in a minute. But uh, in, in our case, we're just going to build something that does addition and subtraction. So really just arithmetic. So just to kind of orient ourselves here, we've got our A register here. And the A register is connected via these eight wires here to our shared bus that's connected to all of our other stuff, some of which we haven't built yet, but <laughs> we will. Um, so this, this really signifies eight wires. And so one way to denote that is to put a little slash with a, a, through it and a little eight there, which is a, a way of you know, signifying that this, this line really represents you know, eight separate uh, bits. Uh, and same thing here with our B register, our B register uh, is connected to our bus. Uh, it's an 8-bit bus. Now we've also got some control signals, as you'll recall. There's a control signal that allows us to load a value from the bus into the A register, so that's our A in signal. Um, and then we also have our A out signal. So this is the signal here that outputs the contents of the A register to the bus. So this is our A out. Um, and same thing with B. We have a B in and a B out for loading the B register and a B out for putting the contents of the B register onto the bus. So if I activate that, you'll see the two goes out on the bus there. And then other parts of the computer can, can read that value. So with our ALU, what we're looking to do, um, our arithmetic logic unit, we're looking to connect that to the bus as well. So we'll have it eight bits uh, connected there. And what we want is some way to say, uh, when we have our ALU output, which I'm gonna call EO, and I'll talk in a minute why it's called that, uh, but this is our, our output signal for the ALU. And when that, when that output signal goes active, what we want to do is output the result of the arithmetic that we're performing. And of course, in order to perform some arithmetic, we need to know what our inputs are. So we have our A register and our B register. We're actually going to connect the eight bits of the A register directly to the ALU and the eight bits of the B register directly to the ALU. Uh, and so in the simplest case, you can imagine if all of the ALU is doing is adding, if it's just doing addition, uh, then this is really all we'd need, right? Because you know it's, it's going to know what's in the A register. We've got our 6 in this case going into the ALU, and we've got our other operand here, our, our 2, going into the ALU. So it's getting a 6 and a 2 coming in, and so it could output the sum of those. It could output an 8 uh, whenever our output signal is active. Um, but if we want to do subtraction, then we need another, you know, another signal here to say do subtraction. And so we'll call that the, the SU or the subtract signal. And so in that case, if the subtract signal is active, um, then when the sum signal is also active, or the output, um, the subtract and the output are both active, then instead of outputting the sum of A and B, it outputs A minus B. It just outputs the difference of A and B. So this is you know, this is enough to build a, or this is, this is essentially what we want to build, is this circuit that, that does this. It has, a, it has an output signal, it has a subtract uh, signal, whether we're subtracting or adding is basically what this input uh, tells us. Um, and then it's directly connected to the A register, it's directly connected to the B register, so that's how it gets its inputs. So if we want to, you know, add two numbers, first we've got to put one number into the A register and we've got to put the other number into the B register, but then we can set these bits appropriately and get the output back out on the bus and then you know, presumably do something with it. 
So the way that we're going to actually do the addition is using the 74LS283, which is a 4-bit adder. Uh, and uh, if you want to know how a 4-bit binary adder works, I've got a video that, uh, where I build a 4-bit adder you know, from, from logic gates. Uh, so you can go back and take a look at that video. I recommend it. I'll link it uh, down below. Uh, but, that, but that video walks through exactly how this works uh, from, from logic gates and everything. Um, but since, we, since we, we can look at that video, we know how it works, uh, I'm going to take a shortcut and use this chip, um, which, which has a 4-bit adder built into it. Uh, or it is a 4-bit adder, I guess. Uh, and so you can look at the pinout here, and you can see we've got A1, A2, A3, A4. That's our 4 bits uh, A input. And then B1, uh, B2, B3, and B4 is our 4 bits of our second input. Uh, and then it has these outputs, sigma 1, uh, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma 4. And, and it uses the sigma signal uh, to indicate sum, because uh, that's, that's the output. Uh, and that's also, incidentally, where I'm getting this, uh, uh, this EO uh, for, the, for the output of the ALU, because it's, it's just kind of customary to refer to the, the result of some arithmetic operation, uh, well, particularly addition or summation with a sigma, uh, a capital sigma. So the E kind of, you know, <laughs> sort of looks like a sigma. Um, so just kind of a convention there. So you've got uh, the four-bit input, four, uh, the second four-bit input, and then the four bits output on this chip. You've also got the carry in and the carry out, and that'll let us uh, cascade these together. Because if you remember how a, how a four-bit uh, binary adder works, uh, there's actually four one-bit adders with a carry bit, uh, you know, uh, with a carry of, of one bit going to the carry of the next bit, and then the carry of that bit going, you know, carry in of that or excuse me, the carry out of one bit going into the carry in of the next bit. Um, and so you can cascade, you can continue to cascade beyond four by using these carry, uh, these carry in and carry out. So C0 is the carry in, C4 is the carry out. So we're going to use this four bit uh, adder. And so I'm just going to redraw that a little bit here. So we've got our, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to show here is we've got our four inputs coming from the A register. And then we're going to have four inputs coming from the B register, and then we've got four outputs, which are going to go out to our bus. So that's our 4-bit adder. Of course, you know, we're building an 8-bit computer. We don't, we don't want 4 bits. We want 8 bits. Um, so what we can do is we can cascade a second 4-bit uh, adder like this. So now we have our 8 bits coming from our A register. We've got 8 bits coming from our B register. Uh, and then we've got 8 bits over here going out to our bus. And then what we're doing is we're just taking the carry out from one of the adders and just connecting that directly to the carry in of the other adder. And that essentially builds for us a, an 8-bit adder. So we can add 8 bits plus 8 bits and get the result. Now you remember, we don't always want to output the result here. We only want to output the result when we have this, uh, this sum out uh, signal uh, active. So what we can do is the same thing we did with our registers, which is use this tri-state logic here. Um, and so we have our outputs over here, and then we put them into these, these tri-state buffers, and then we connect the, uh, the enable uh, uh, of, of all of these buffers together, and this is our sum out. This is our EO, or sum out signal. And so when this is active, then we're, then we're asserting the, the result of our addition onto the bus, and when this is inactive, then we're not you know, bringing the bus either high or low, we're essentially disconnected from, from our bus. So now the big question is, how do, we, how do we do subtraction? So this is great for addition, right? We can add one number plus another number, and we get the result over here, and then we can, you know, selectively enable whether that's going out on the bus or not. But what about subtraction? So if we want to subtract what the contents of the B register from the A register, uh, how can we do that? Well, one way would be to negate, uh, you know, arithmet arithmetically negate the, uh, the B register and then add it to the A register, because we already have the addition. All we need to do is build some circuit that can negate it. Well, if you look at my previous video, I made a previous video that talks about two's complement. Uh, and two's complement is a way of representing negative numbers in binary. And one of the really nice advantages of two's complement is that uh, it represents the negative number in a way that if you add it to a positive number, you get the right result. Um, 
and and so this this type of addition will will work if this if this number here is a two's complement negative number. So if we're looking at our at our at our circuit here, we've got a you know let's say in the example we saw before, we've got a six in our A register and a two in our B register. We'd have to first convert that con that two to a negative two. So we've got to we've got to negate that and then add it, and then that'll give us our you know our six minus two. Well, if you remember from the previous video, in order to negate a number using or convert a number to its two's complement negative. Um, you have to invert all of the bits and then add one to the result. And so, you know, you think, well, okay, we could add, maybe add some inverters to these to these uh, inputs here. Maybe that would work. Uh, but you don't, you don't always want to invert them. You just want to invert it when you want to subtract, and then you want to not invert when when you're adding. So one way to do that is with an XOR gate. And so. An XOR gate, just, just uh, as a reminder, um, has two inputs. Uh, well, I could have more, but <laughs> a two-input XOR gate has two inputs. Uh, and so we've got our A and a B input. And if uh, and the output is high whenever A or B is high, but not if both of them are. So it's an exclusive OR. So it's A or B, but not both. Um, so that's fine. But what's, what's interesting about this is if you look at the condition where, where A is zero, if we just look at that, you'll see that the output is whatever B is. And then in the case where A is 1, the output is always the opposite of B. So what we can do is we can use the XOR as a kind of a conditional inverter. So in other words, it'll, it'll invert B, but only when A is, is, is on. If A is off, then it doesn't invert B. So we can kind of take advantage of that and use a bunch of XOR gates here. And so if this second input, so you see all these second inputs are all tied together. If this second input is zero, so this is zero right here, uh, then whatever's on the B register is just gonna be the same thing that's coming coming through the output here, right? Because if our if our if one input is zero, then the output is just whatever the other input is. So if this is zero, no worries. You know, our B register is coming through. Our A register, of course, is just directly connected here. And so our output is going to be A plus B. But if we set this, this other thing to a 1, then you know, if, if one input is a 1, then, then the output is going to be the opposite of the other input. And so what's going to happen here, if this is a 1, then we're going to, then we're going to negate, we're going to invert all of, all of these things from the B register. So we're going to, we're going to add uh, what basically is the ones complement of the B register, because if you invert every bit, uh, you get the ones complement. So you get the ones complement of the B register plus the A register, and then we're going to get our output. But of course, if you look back at the previous video where we talk about ones complement and twos complement, uh, remember ones complement doesn't quite give us the correct answer when we're trying to add a ones complement uh, negative number to a, to a positive number. Uh, so really what we want is twos complement. And the difference between one's complement and two's complement is is one, right? Because uh, to get the two's complement, you take the one's complement, you invert everything, and then you add one. So how can we add one? Well, it just so happens that our one of our our four bit adder, our our low order uh, four bit adder, has a carry in. And if we set this carry in to one, in other words, if we connect this like this, then this over here is now our subtract input because it inverts all of these and then it also puts a one into our carry in, which gets added as a one to the to the ones place of our addition. Because it's thinking, oh, I'm carrying a one from the previous digit, but there was no previous digit. So it's really just adding one uh, to our to our whole thing. So we're with these XOR gates, we're we're inverting. And then with our with our with our carry in input, we're adding one. So if we invert and add one, then we're effectively taking the two's complement of this input. And if we're taking the two's complement, we're getting the the negative version of that. So if we have a you know if we have a seven uh, on our B register and we take the two's complement, we get a negative seven. And so if we have a negative seven plus whatever we're doing here. Then we're basically subtracting seven from whatever's in the A register. And so this gives us. Uh, and this is effectively the circuit that we're going to use for uh, for this ALU, right? We've got our we've got our eight bits of output going out onto our bus here, 
Uh, we've got the 8 bits coming from the A register. We've got the 8 bits down here uh, coming from the B register. We've got, our, um, we've got our output here. We can control our output. And we have our sum. Uh, so if this is 0, we're adding. If it's 1, then, then we're subtracting.